and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Dwayne Butcher of Lean Frontiers, and I'll serve as your host for today. Uh, I do have a few points of logistics before we get started. Uh, today's presentation is being recorded, so look for an email uh, shortly after we finish with a link to view the recording. And please do share this with others in your organization. Due to the short nature of our webinar today, we will not be fielding questions. However, our presenter will share his email address uh, if you have a question. Uh, and then finally, this webinar is a lead up to the annual uh, TWI and Kata Summit that takes place uh, June 10th and 11th in Billund, Denmark at the Hotel Legoland Resort. The TWI and Kata Summit, something that our presenter, Joachim, has been uh, uh, an active member in uh, as a presenter for uh, many years. We do ask that you uh, consider joining us. Um, it will be great to, uh, at this point, we're planning on holding it in in person. be great to see many people face to face. So you can learn more about that event by visiting uh, TWI and Kata Summit.eu. So, with that said, let me introduce our presenter for today, Joachim Bustrom. Joachim is a Toyota Kata master trainer from Business Through People and has worked with many organizations over the past eight years. He also has co translated the Toyota Kata book into Swedish and claims to be a proud Kata geek. So, Joachim, really appreciate you being here, and I'll go ahead and turn things over to you. Thank you for having me, uh, Dwayne, and uh, welcome everybody uh, around the globe, I assume. So, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, wherever you are. Um, it's a great joy to be here and talk about this topic of the pain of being a learner. Um, we have talked a lot about uh, the, um, the coach's role in Toyota Kata. Uh, and we also talked a lot about the, the second coach role. And all of those roles are really, really important, of course. Uh, but before we dig into the, uh, today's subject, just a quick look at the technology is with us. Um, there we go. Almost. So uh, I'm part of something called business through people. Um, we have four core values that we that we foster within business through people. That is always having people in mind, continuously learn, have the courage to question status quo and the things way are and having a servant attitude to our clients needs and um, helping the world in becoming a better place. Today we're going to talk about uh, and just uh, getting into the title what why did we choose the pain of being a learner? Um, that could be the color is simple but above all else there's something um, we need to show respect for people. I'll get back to that. And then we'll get into who's doing the real work of, of Kata. And a caution point at the end of getting stuck in templates. I will actually do this a little bit more interactive because I think it's really boring to look at a PowerPoint slide. So why the title, uh, The Pain of Being a Learner? Uh, that quote comes from a participant I had on something that we call the Kata Bootcamp, where we really dig deep and we push people beyond the knowledge threshold into the gray zone of learning. And we realize how tough that is to be on the other side of that, that knowledge threshold. Um, so one of our participants uh, actually had a really, really tough time uh, during that, that event. 
and she came up with the pain of being a learner. I don't want to be a learner. I just want to coach people. The truth of the matter is, if you want to be a good, a good coach, uh, you have to be an experienced learner. If you can't put yourself in the shoes of the learner, then it's very, very difficult to coach other people who are in that position. I hear people claim that Kara is something simple. It's just follow a card with some questions on it. Uh, it takes 15 minutes per day, really simple. I wanna question that really, really hard. Because what is it? What is Teora Kala? It is a practice routine to become a scientific thinker. It's not a tool, it's not a method. And what happens when you're supposed to be a scientific thinker when you're actually playing with your own beliefs? What is simple with questioning what you think is true and not true. And what happens to your brain when facts show you that what I think is true is not. By definition, that is not simple. It can't be simple. The whole idea behind Tura Kala is to work with challenges. We're challenging you, we want you to grow as a human being. And if you tell me that is simple, I don't think you know what, what that is. That is something you have to test and try. So in order to show people respect, uh, we need to treat it with the seriousness that it deserves. Because if, if we think it's simple, we're not gonna act and behave the way it deserves. Uh, then we're gonna give it 15 minutes per day, and that's it. But that's not going to work. I just need to check here if I'm still the presenter. Yes, I think I am. So, Carla is not simple, it's a pain. So, if we have a, a look at uh, the distribution of, of effort within Teora Kala. And I think there's an assumption, there's a hypothesis that we have second coaches who are doing a bit of the work. We have coaches who are more involved and then we have learners. And they're doing quite a bit more. I'm not sure that hypothe hypothesis is right, to be honest. I think it more looks like something like this. There's an endless amount of work for the learner. For them, it's a 24 seven thing. It would be nice to know your, your opinion on this. Uh, and you are free to send me questions or um, your comments on that hypothesis. Because what we see is learners struggling with a lot of things here. One of the things they struggle with is what we just talked about, the knowledge threshold. And I'll just briefly talk about what the knowledge threshold is. If you're a learner, you're standing over here, then you have your target condition, your TC, a target condition, that you can see somewhere over there. But you can only see so far. So you have a, a barrier, and um, that's, the, that's the horizon. We call that the knowledge threshold. Knowledge threshold. 
And that is where facts and data ends. So up to that point, you have facts and data supporting your, your notion of what is true. So this area here is predictable. predictable. I know what's gonna happen. I've been there before, I've done that. We have data that shows up. Beyond the knowledge threshold, I think, I assume, probably, things are going to happen. That's when you enter your, your gray zone of learning, we call that. Gray zone. Here, you have obstacles. Obstacles are things you did not expect. So you can't prepare yourself for your obstacles. You'll run into them by moving. And here, things are unpredict unpredictable by definition. Unpredictable. I don't know. And you have to be willing to acknowledge for yourself that I don't know. And that is really, really difficult because your brain, our brains, everybody's, is wired to say, when you enter this, this area here, and things are going and starting to get tough, your brain is telling you, go back. This is uncomfortable, I don't like it. And that shows in so many different ways. Um, the brain can give you a gentle, I don't like it, you'll better go back, or, you'll just panic because this is too tough. This is too hard. Um, so we're not really rigged for, let's see here, there's something with the, uh, thank you for letting me know. See here, can you see me now? Joachim, I, I believe that you, uh, as far as I can tell, it looks like you're full screen, so. Okay, I had a, there we go, that gets better. So thank you, Mohammed, for letting me know. Um, and let me know if, if there's any other problems, okay? So uh, where were we? We were in the uh, beyond that knowledge threshold. And as a learner, um, coming back to me finding my own beliefs, what, what is true and what is not true, at the same time, I have a team of people that I have to sort of deal with and make sure that they also question their beliefs. So I have a number of things going on here as, as a learner. It's not only doing experiments, it's dealing with all that unpredictable things that, that are happening. I don't trust myself because I'm in the gray zone of learning. I don't know. And how do I get people to join me in that journey of not knowing and finding out? It's not that simple. So there's a lot of things going on for learners over here. So coming in as a coach, that has its difficulties, absolutely. And it's not something I wanna play down, but being a learner and being able to answer those questions in a truthful manner, that is hard business, that is tough. So as a learner, I'm standing here and I'm getting into the position where I have to fight that instinct of run away and go back. Uh, the coach helps me to remain in the gray zone of learning, um, but it's still a struggle. It always will be. And if the learner actually is comfortable 
as a coach, you have to question if you're uh, challenging enough because it has to feel a bit uncomfortable. In psychology, there's a, a term called flow, and I'm gonna do this really, really simplified, but I think it has its place here. Uh, we all know what flow is as lean thinkers. Uh, but there's a psychological term that is called flow as well. I hope that's in there. If you're able to see that. Um, what, it, what it says is if we understimulate people, we don't challenge people enough, uh, they get bored. It's no fun. They get bored. And when people get bored, our instinct, our body's uh, response will stress because my coach or my leader is pushing me to something that I think is really not important. It's not fun. Uh, so I'm getting all the bad things of stress, uh, cortisol and all the bad stuff. And the same thing happens if we overstimulate and we ask too much, we challenge too hard. Um, then we think our boss is just stupid, he's an idiot. And it's not me, it's Chichen Mahaile who's invented the, uh, the model. But somewhere in between, people go, I think this is difficult, but it's not stupid. And that's where flow exists. That's where flow comes in. And people in flow are difficult to stop. They like what they're doing, they're inspired, they're engaged, they're motivated, they want to go. And it's that channel of flow that the coach has to balance, but also the learner, because the learner has themselves to balance and their team. And keeping people in that, that zone of flow um, is a balance act that we always have to develop and, and process. So these two together, the knowledge special and keeping people in flow. To me, that's essential to understand what, what being a learner in, in Kala is all about. If we don't understand the flow terminology, we've just invented a new way of burning people out systematically which Teodokala is not. Above all else, it's a people pattern. Uh, it's there to develop and grow people. And where do people grow? Where can we, um, how can we put people in a place where they grow? The sad part is the only place we can do that is in the gray zone of learning, where it's uncomfortable. Hmm. That's why the improvement color pattern is so important because if we put people in the gray zone of learning but we don't give them the means of navigating in that area, then it's gonna be really, really tough. But if I have a compass, in this case, that's the four steps of the improvement color, I can always navigate even though I don't know the waters around me. And that's really important. And it, and it explains why we need to have really, really strong patterns of thinking. If we don't, we're gonna be lost in dangerous seas and that's not good. That's not good. And that is not respect for people, is it? So how easy does this sound to be a learner now? Hmm. On top of that, as a learner, I need to understand what kind of tools, what kind of principles, what kind of knowledge do I need to pull into my, my exploration here? Uh, what are my paradigms that I need to 
challenge and have a closer look at? And which paradigms do I have that are actually good for me that helps me? All of this combined means as a learner, there's a continuous search for new knowledge, new kind of tools, using the tools I already have. And I think sometimes that's the hardest part. We know a lot of things, but all of a sudden, when something new comes in, and um, unfortunately in some organizations, we see that Kava comes in like a hype or a buzzword. And you don't really get the context of it. And then all of a sudden you stop replacing Kara. You replace stuff you already know with Kara. And that is never the intention. Um, in Kara, we need to use all the knowledge, all the tools, all the principles that we've ever learned because we're facing new and daunting challenges. So all the knowledge we have, we have to sort of embrace that and really grow all that knowledge. Um, so Kara is never replacing anything. It's just adding the context and being a compass when I use all that knowledge that I have. Then we see that and in uh, Mike's books, excellent as they are, sometimes the, uh, the level of detail is not that big. Um, and what hits you when you start building a storyboard as a learner is that there's actually a lot of details. There's a lot of things behind the scenes. It's not just putting up a challenge that consists of quality cost delivery measurements. There's something else going on. So we need to understand the dynamics of a challenge, which is basically the flow model. Do people actually get motivated and engaged by this? If I don't understand that, well, the, re the rest of my story is gonna be lost. My next, next thing is to understand my current condition. And how do I do that? Well, there has to be facts and data. Why? Because my knowledge threshold is where facts and data ends. If I don't know that, it's gonna be really difficult to build a hypothesis, which is gonna be my next target condition. And how do I phrase a target condition? How do I get a hold of all those elements uh, that I need to have in a target condition so I can understand it and drive towards it. There's quite a few things there. Once I know where I'm going, I have, a, I have a hypothesis in my target condition. And that is what it is. A target condition is a hypothesis. It's not a number. It's not just stating a fact. Uh, I'm testing something new, something that is beyond what we've done before. So my hypothesis is, if we do this, if my process looked like this and worked like this, that's going to be better than what I have. If there's no hypothesis testing in my target condition, it's going to fail. Now I need to see obstacles. Hmm, what's preventing me from reaching my target condition? How do I face an obstacle? How do I make sure it's not just reverse engineering, making sure that my ideas are gonna be implemented? So obstacles need to be what is actually what I can see right now in the way of my getting to my target condition. And then setting up PDCA experiments, very, very short, small experiments that I can do today. What's the best way of doing that? What's the simplest way and the quickest way for me saying, 
I don't know to let's find out. And I want to know tomorrow or today, this afternoon, if possible. And there's a number of steps in there that I need to keep track of. So my learnings are clear so I can take sensible and well-judged next steps. So when you, the more you zoom in on, on a storyboard, you'll find details, 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 details. In the big scheme of things, it might not be seem as important, but it actually is. Because if you're missing a couple of these key points along the way, it all falls apart. And now we're just doing our normal to-do list in a fancier template. And we want to avoid that. So the starter cut a storyboard, when you just look at the template and the squares, it looks really simple. But I urge you to zoom down and look at each one of those squares on that storyboard to see what's in there. Because there's a lot of hidden small things. And if you don't see them up front, uh, the risk is either you never get it and you're just wasting a lot of time and effort, or you get stuck because it's, it seems too complicated. So once you know it, and once you can deal with it, then it becomes more simple. And perhaps one day you will be able to run Kadas in 15 minutes per day. But there is a journey to that. So when you jump into a car the first time, you're not running fast. On the contrary, you're extremely slow, which is a good thing. That's the only way to learn. So half an hour is passing quickly when you're having fun. Um, I hope this webinar gave you some, some insights. Uh, and as Dwayne said, you are free and welcome to send me your your questions or your comments. Uh, just share the. So you have my. Yeah, there's your email Thank address. You so Thank you so much for listening. Uh, I hope it gave value and I wish you all a continued great day. Thank you, Joachim. Uh, and, you know, I forgot to mention this, but Joachim is actually joining us from uh, Sweden. Uh, I'm here in the United States, so it's great to connect with you. One of the beauties of Zoom during this pandemic. <laughs> it is. Um, so th th thanks for, for being with us. Thanks for your thought leadership. Uh, and, and thanks, too, to the, uh, the entire Business to People uh, team uh, for all the great work you're doing. Um, around the globe. Just a reminder to please do join us for the TWI and Toyota Kata Summit in Europe. Uh, it's taking place as of right now, um, June 10th and 11th in Billund, Denmark at the Hotel Legoland Resort. Um, it's a great opportunity to not only talk about Kata, TWI, but actually the combination of both Kata and TWI. Uh, very few venues in which you're going to be able to find that uh, conversation take place at both both uh, both in the same place. You can learn more about that event by visiting TWI and Kata Summit.eu. So thanks everyone who participated in today's session. Thanks again, Joachim. Thank everyone you. have a great day or evening. Bye. Bye. Bye.